from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, July the 27th, 2018. One of the victims in last night's terror attack in the West Bank has died. 31-year-old Yotam Avadia was one of three Israeli residents of the Jewish settlement of Adam who was stabbed by a 17-year-old Palestinian. The terrorist had climbed over the perimeter fence in the settlement northeast of Jerusalem at around 9 o'clock local time last night. He saw Ovadia, who was walking down the street on his way to his parents' home, and stabbed him multiple times in the torso. The terrorist then stabbed two others, one of whom was seriously wounded, a third man was lightly injured, and managed to shoot the terrorist several times, killing him. The victims were rushed to the hospital for treatment where Ovadia later died of his injuries. Hundreds came out to pay their final respects to Ovadia. Today, as he was laid to rest, he leaves behind a wife and two young children. The IDF was still investigating whether the terrorist identified later as Mohammed Tariq Youssef had an accomplice in the attack. Youssef was from the nearby Arab village of Kauber, and IDF forces were conducting security checks for those entering and exiting the village. They questioned a number of family members of the terrorist, suspended permits, and took four Palestinians for questioning. The IDF also said it would send more troops to the West Bank in light of the stabbings. And violence in Gaza today and in Jerusalem. Some 7,000 Palestinians rioted at the Gaza security fence. Rioters were hurling stones, pipe bombs, and a grenade at IDF soldiers and burning tires. The Hamas health ministry claimed one Palestinian was killed. A terror squad was also launching arson balloons into southern Israel, and the IDF fired at the group. No injuries were reported there. And after Muslim prayers at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem's Old City, Muslim rioters barricaded themselves inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque and threw stones and launched fireworks at Israeli police. Four police officers were injured, 24 suspects were taken for questioning. Israel police were forced to evacuate the holy site and bar entry to it for about four hours before it could be reopened for worship. A man who painted anti-Semitic graffiti on a home in Staten Island, New York, was sentenced today. 37-year-old James Rizzo Jr. was sentenced to six months in jail and five years probation. If you recall, back in October, Rizzo was seen on surveillance camera footage painting a swastika and anti-Semitic slur on the garage door of a home located down the street from where he lived. The Staten Island Advance reported that Rizzo pled guilty last month in state Supreme Court to third-degree criminal mischief as a hate crime. B'nai B'rith International is sending aid to Greece following the devastating wildfires there that left at least 80 people dead. B'nai B'rith's efforts are in cooperation with two Greek-American organizations, the American Hellenic Educational Progressive Association and the American Hellenic Institute. A Jewish American Coast Guardsman killed in the Iraq War was honored this week. Nathan Brookenthal was killed in 2004 at the age of 24. He was the first Coast Guardsman to be killed in action since Vietnam. On Wednesday, his family and fellow Guardsmen and women gathered in Alexandria, Virginia at a ceremony naming a boat, the fast response cutter boat, in his memory. And on Monday, a post office in Pennsylvania was named for a Jewish airman killed in Afghanistan. 30-year-old Staff Sergeant Peter Taub was killed in 2015. He grew up near the post office in Winecote, a northern suburb of Philadelphia that now bears his name. Well, Israel's Business Daily Calculist reports that Facebook has purchased an Israeli messaging company. Redkicks was acquired for a reported $100 million. It will now join the Workplace team to help companies work together. Workplace is a subscription-based social platform for businesses launched by Facebook in 2016. Redkicks co-founders, Israeli brothers Udi and Roy Antebi, said in a blog on the company's website, Workplace brings this mission to enterprises to make them more connected and productive. 
Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, July the 27th. Live Shabbat services are coming up at 6 o'clock from New York City's Central Synagogue, followed by performances from the Krakow Festival. At 8, a discussion by four leading American female rabbis from the 92nd Street Y. At 9, it's the film Third Jihad, exploring radical Islam in America. At 10.30, it's Musica with Laser Lloyd. And coming up right after this newscast tonight, a look at this week's Torah portion with Rabbi Shlomo Riskin. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, July the 27th, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader. Shabbat Shalom.